Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going to take a look at the New York Times hard Sudoku puzzle. We've done this puzzle uh, a few times before, it's always been of a high quality, quite difficult. Um, so without further ado, let's take a look. Now, as usual, in any 3x3 three three block, once I identify that a number can only go in exactly two positions, I'll allow myself to make little pencil marks so you can see this one here and this one here mean the one is going to appear in one of these three positions in this 3x3 three three block, but this one here restricts it to 2. Once it's restricted to 2, I pencil mark it. Um, that's got to be a 6 by simple Sudoku rules. Um, and let's carry on with the solve. Um, a few pencil marks of 8 down here. Some 5s over here. It's always the case when, oh, that's got to be a 5, look. When you're solving Sudoku, the starting phase is always the same. It always feels a bit hit and miss. Um, you're always just bouncing around the grid trying to find something. Whenever I see these 2x2 two two blocks, by the way, in a 3x3 three three block, so this arrangement here, I would always be using this early in a solve. You can see here this 6 interacts very nicely with this little block and allows pencil mark 6s up here. Um, might not prove absolutely useful, in fact doesn't in this instance, but it's always important to check these things. Um, down here, 3, 5, 6 and 9. Ah, now, in fact, if we look at column 9 now, it's a weak column in the sense that we've got five numbers already placed, so we know we're looking for three, five, six, and nine, and if we scan down, ask yourself where you can place a five in this column. There's, only, there's a five here and a five here preventing fives here, and a five here preventing five here, so in fact this square here must be a five. Um, that allows us to place a five here and here from our earlier pencil mark, um, and place two fives like that. So. That's, that's a reasonable step forward. So again, now we can do the same thing here with the threes. We need to place a three somewhere in column nine. And we have two threes here, forcing the threes out of these two positions. So they can only in fact go into this position. Now because we did the work on the six, we know immediately now we can place a six once this pencil mark is removed as a possibility for where to place the 6, there is only one position now that's valid for the 6. That's the useful thing about this notation. Um, so now that we have a 6, 9, double, we should notate down here like that. Um, and we should always be checking this area of the grid now just to see if there's anything that we can make use of, as well as noting that this is a 1, 2, 4 combination in some order. Now you can see over here, we, you know, there's only one 4. There's no 1s, no 2s, no so that's a shame. Um, but that means we need 3, 7, 8, 9. So I'm just checking this column now to see whether there's anything we can do with that. I don't think so. This is obviously a 3 or a 9, but I don't think we can use that at this stage. Um, no, okay, so 7's here, so we can place a 7 into one of those two positions. Five, seven, seven. Ah, that's annoying, okay. Is the frustrating part about solving live is that if you get stuck your ignorance is brutally exposed um, so I can't quite see where the next number's coming from yet just give me a second let's have a look at row 9 you can see ah yes okay if we look at row 9 this 2 interacts very nicely with it. It forces, especially in this cell here, we have um, 
only six, seven, eight, nine as possibilities because one, two, three, four, and five are all ruled out. So let's look at the interaction with these squares. You can see, in fact, this square here is a hidden single. It can only be a seven. Um, again, difficult to spot that. Um, and so don't worry if you didn't see that. That gives us a lovely seven, eight pairing in here, which will certainly uh, keep an eye on. Um, and there's a three. So in fact, now if we look at row two of the grid, um, we need with this seven eight double. We now need to place a three and a nine. But this square here can't take a nine because of this. So this square here is forced to be a three. This square here is nine. That means two and nine into these two positions, which we can now place. Allows us to pencil mark twos here. And the interaction of this nine and this nine are now interesting. Because we can now place pencil mark nines into these two positions. Ah, in fact, we can go further than that. Let's keep thinking about nines here. We can now pencil mark nines into this two, these two positions. And look, this nine here. And this nine here mean we can pencil mark nines into these two positions. And now, oops, um, now we have an X wing of nines. So you can see here, if we look at focus in on columns five and six of the grid, we have two. Oops, keeps doing that. We have nines here and nines here in the same positions within their rows. So if this is a nine in the final solution, this will be a nine. If this is a nine this will be a 9. Either way, there can be no more 9s in columns 5 and 6. Um, so in, what does that mean? Well, that means there's no 9s in any of these four cells. And that's really helpful because now we can pencil mark 9s into these two positions here. Um, and I imagine that will be useful at some stage in this solve. So what do we need here? We need a and place fours and three pencil marks like that. And we need three, four, and five across here. Oh, so in fact, uh, what are we doing? No, it's not right. We can place the threes here. So in fact, this is a th oh, okay. three, five, and four like that. That resolves the position of this five here. And now you can see the font of the fives changes, which I find very disconcerting, but there we are. Um, that just means that we've placed all of the nines. Um, and we can pencil mark some fours in here. Right. Now, where to look now? We have a seven here, look, that we've identified. That means this must be a seven. Let's get rid of that. Seven, seven. Let's just check these columns here. One, three, six, and nine down here. So the ah, yes, okay. So have a look now at column uh, three. You can see we need to place one, three, six, and nine in this column. Now, if we scan down to this position, we have a one and a three already in the in the row. So this square here can only be a 6 or a 9. And look, this square here can only be a 6 or a 9. So we know that there is a 6-9 pair in these two cells in row 9. Now, why is that useful? Well, we managed through that work we did with the X-wing to locate that one of these squares could be a 9. Well, it can no longer be this one, because either this square or this square is the 9 in row 9 of the grid. So this square must be a 9. Now that means, again, because this is a 6 and a 9 here, this square is a 2 or an 8, and this square is a 2 or an 8. So we definitely need to... Well, I'm going to take a look now at column 4, you know, because this, this square is more restricted than you might expect. So let's see if we can use that fact. So we need to place two seven and eight, and yes, yes. Where can we place a seven now in um, 
0.4 only in this position. Oops, I managed to write an 8. <laughs> um, so there we go. So now this square is 2 or 8. This square is 2 or 8. I'm going to use that immediately. I'm not sure. But the 9s are getting seriously restricted now. Um, let's try and use these two 9s. You can see that forces. Yeah. So we now know, using this 9 and this 9 and our notation method, that the 9 is in either this position or this position. But we know that this cannot be a 9 from because we found this 6-9 pair. So this is not a 9, therefore this is a 9. So that's a 9, that's a 9, and that's a 6. Let's remove the 9 here, just because that's easier. Um, now, what can we do with that fact? Sure, now that means we can place a 9 here, look. 9 there. I feel like we're almost, almost cracked the solve now. Why have I got five in that square? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I don't know why there's a five there. Sometimes it seems to insert pencil marks for no reason I can understand. Um, let's have a look at column three again. Now we can. So we need to place one, a three. And a 6 here, well there's a 6 here and a 6 here, so this square here is forced to be a 6, um, which is very nice indeed. Now this square here can only be a 1, it resolves this entire line here, forces this to be a 4 by simple Sudoku rules, um, and we can pencil mark 6s into these two positions because of the interaction of this 6 and this 6. Um, so now if we look along this row, the central row of the grid, we need to place a 1 and a 2. This square here can't take a 1 anymore, so oops, that's going to be a 2. That's going to have to be the 1. Um, that means this is a 3 and this is an 8. Pencil mark 8 here, 3, 6 and 8 into these two positions, which resolves this. This now must be a 2. And therefore the 8's over there, and this must be a 2 as well. 2, 2, now this is a 2 and this is a 4, and this is a 4, and this is an 8. And you can see you can actually get quite quick once you, um, because of this notation method, once you make a breakthrough, Sometimes a lot of numbers can flow very, very fast, um, which is one of the reasons I think that this is the uh, this is the most usual method used for speed solvers or by speed solvers. Could have done the threes earlier, but obviously I failed to see it. It's one of the disadvantages of solving live is that you make a whole load of um, there's a whole load of occasions where I wish I'd spotted things much sooner. Am I? like to think I might have done if I'd been solving on paper. Um, so what do we need now? We need uh, in this row here, 6 and a 7, therefore that's it. There we go, 7, 6, 6, 9, 9, 2, and that will be a 2. So I hope that was an interesting uh, exercise. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy the puzzles uh, and are solving of them, please do subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate it. I'll see you again soon for another edition of Kraken Cryptic.